In this lesson, we will look at the EU regulations appertaining to aircraft emergency lighting systems, and we will see how these regulations are put into practice. The basic regulations are laid out in EU OPS 1, Commercial Air Transportation, Aeroplanes, with greater detail being provided in CS 23, Normal, Utility, Aerobatic and Commuter Category Aeroplanes, and CS 25, Large Aeroplanes. The regulations split aeroplanes into three groups, those which have an approved passenger seating configuration of nine or less, those with 19 or less, but more than 9, and those with more than 19. With an approved passenger seating configuration of 9 or less seats, the aeroplane must not be operated at night unless it is provided with a source of general cabin illumination to facilitate evacuation of the aeroplane. This may use normal internal lighting systems, provided they are capable of remaining operative after the aeroplane's battery has been switched off. All aeroplanes with an approved passenger configuration of more than nine seats must have an emergency lighting system with an independent power supply. For aeroplanes with an approved passenger configuration of 19 seats or less, but more than nine, which are not certified to EASA CS23 or CS25, the independent emergency lighting system must include general cabin illumination. For aeroplanes with an approved passenger configuration of 19 seats or less, but more than 9, which are certified to EASA CS23 or CS25, the independent emergency lighting system must include general cabin illumination, internal lighting in emergency exit areas, and illuminated emergency exit markings and location signs. Aeroplanes with an approved passenger configuration of more than 19 passenger seats must have an independent emergency lighting system which includes general cabin illumination, internal lighting in floor level emergency exit areas, illuminated emergency exit markings and location signs, floor proximity emergency escape path markings in the passenger compartment, and exterior emergency lighting at all passenger emergency exits. We will now look in greater detail at the requirements for aeroplanes with more than 19 passenger seats. By doing this, the requirements for the other groups will also be covered. There must be an independent emergency lighting system. To achieve this, the emergency lights are normally battery operated. The batteries are usually of the nickel cadmium type. They are normally kept fully charged by the aeroplane's electrical system. The batteries must be able to maintain the emergency lights at full brightness for a minimum of 10 minutes. General cabin illumination may be provided by white lights in the ceiling along the aisles and at the emergency exit locations. There may also be white lights located low down on the sides of the passenger seats to illuminate the escape paths. Exit location signs must have red letters on a white, electrically illuminated or self-illuminated background. The emergency exit signs must be repeated at low level. There must be floor proximity markings to provide emergency evacuation guidance for passengers when all sources of illumination more than 1.2 metres 
or four feet above the cabin aisle floor, are totally obscured. These may consist of locator lights on the floor down the aisles, or a continuous strip of light along the aisle. Finally, there must be exterior lighting at all emergency exits, such that the escape route from the exit to the point on the ground where the evacuee will take his first step is illuminated. The emergency lighting system is controlled by two switches. One on the flight deck and the other in the passenger cabin adjacent to a cabin crew member station. The flight deck switch has three positions, off, armed and on. It is guarded to the armed position. The switch is in the guarded arm position for all normal flight operations. Adjacent to the flight deck switch, there is a warning light which is captioned, not armed. This light is supplied from the normal aircraft electrical power supply and will come on at any time the aircraft electrical power supply is on and the emergency lights are anything other than armed. The passenger cabin switch has two positions, normal and on. It is usually in the normal position. With the flight deck switch in the arm position and the cabin switch in the normal position, the emergency light control circuit is armed. It is monitoring the aircraft's essential electrical system and provided this system is normal, the emergency lights will be extinguished. If the aircraft's essential electrical power system fails, the emergency lights will illuminate automatically. If the flight deck switch is moved to on, the emergency lights will come on. And because the system is no longer armed, the not armed light will illuminate. The pilot switch off position is used when shutting down the aircraft. With the switch in this position, the emergency lights will not automatically come on when electrical power is removed. With the pilot switch in the off position, the not armed light will be lit until electrical power is removed. The emergency lighting system may be switched on from the cabin switch by moving it from normal to on. Operation of the cabin switch to on will turn on the emergency lights no matter what position the flight deck switch is in. The selection of emergency lights on from the passenger cabin will illuminate the not armed light on the flight deck. That is the end of the lesson. Remember that the emergency lighting system has an independent power supply, which must be able to maintain the emergency lights at full power for a minimum of 10 minutes. The lights can be armed to come on automatically in the event of an essential electrical system failure, or they can be switched on manually from either the flight deck or the cabin. Emergency lights illuminate the emergency escape paths both inside and outside the aircraft.